So the conversations around bike lanes can get so polarizing sometimes, so wrapped up in fights between NIMBYs and YIMBYs and grandstanding politicians and advocate groups and everything that it can all be a bit much. But you know what gets lost in those conversations? How these decisions impact everyday people just trying to live their life. And so today, we will try to rectify that. Hi, I'm Maddie. I am Cargo Bike Mama on Instagram. I am also a full-time working mom of three kids, and I live here in New York City. Uh, I'm Cargo Bike Mama's <laughs> husband. Um, I'm the Instagram husband. My name is Jeff in real life, and uh, I work in tech. Also have three kids. And Same three kids. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Tom, and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting, and the ways we get around our cities. Coming at you today from New York City. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Maddie and Jeff are like thousands of other New Yorkers raising their family in the city, but they've found a bit of a hack. And if you follow Maddie on Instagram, you know what that hack is. It's bikes. They've discovered that bikes are an amazing way of getting around the city, and it's become a huge positive part of their family's lives. And they agreed to show me how they do this. But as we toured the city, it struck me that what they were really showing me was a whole bunch of little moments, little make it or break it moments, little things that either make their bike life easy and efficient or throw up a barrier that they have to overcome. In a city full of make it or break it moments, let's start with a make it moment. Something simple but profound that has had a huge positive impact on their lives. So this is kind of a famous spot we're at here. We are at a very famous spot this for a couple the, of reasons. Yeah, what's the, what's the one that everybody knows? Probably the Dakota, I'd yeah, say. Probably. So this is the Dakota. It is where John Lennon was shot. Um, and then it's also a corner of where we have the Central Park West bike lane. Right, so this bike lane was maybe not a turning point, but an important moment in very important. the development of New York City as a yes, bike city, right? I would agree. Why? I think there's a few reasons. One, it became a very efficient way for New Yorkers to get up uh, and bike from Midtown to the upper parts of Manhattan. It also sent a really big signal that protected bike lanes were important. It took up a parking lane and it was something that the community boards had fought over for a while and then it came into fruition. And do you so. think it's helped you be Huge. a bike mom? Huge. In what way? It, because it's a really efficient way to get home. So like there's a lot of things that we'll be doing in, um, you know, throughout Upper West Side. And then I'll cut over to this, the uh, Central Park West bike lane and take it all the way up. Sorry. It's a big game changer. And I think that that's part of the narrative about learning about biking in New York City is that we actually have very safe infrastructure if you know where to go, right? So it's not as widespread as it should be. But there are a lot of areas that have protected bike lanes. But not every route is as welcoming and safe as that one. Just a few blocks away is what could be described as a break it moment for the family if they hadn't found a very simple way around it. So this is Manhattan Avenue. It is a main stretch for Harlem families, West Side Harlem families who want to bike down to get to one of the more protected areas like Central Park or Columbus, but it's a really dangerous path. And so one of our only options is to bike on the sidewalk, which is technically illegal. But uh, looking at the way that the street is, this is a better option and I'm just more willing to risk getting a ticket than to bike my kids in the traffic in this area. So it's a big annoyance. Um, you know, this could be greatly improved in terms of connectivity. Now we come to another potential break at moment in which Maddie, in an almost offhanded kind of way, mentioned the dangers of unprotected intersections. So they're unprotected intersections, so you're always like looking over your shoulder to make sure that cars aren't coming. Um, because that's where the most crashes in New York City will occur. Right. As I was editing this piece, the city of New York released data on traffic deaths for 2023. Of the 30 cyclists killed, 15 were hit by trucks. And at least six of those were hit by a truck turning right at an unprotected intersection. So yes, there's a lot of work to do here to keep people on bikes safe. Something that could be a break it moment for a lot of people, especially in New York, is the cost. The city is expensive and cargo bikes can be too. But Maddie has a way of thinking about the cost that sort of flips the script and shows that the cost of riding a bike can actually be a make it moment. So people are constantly concerned about the upfront costs because they can be expensive. But there are a range of price ranges for cargo bikes. You can get one for, you know, 1500 up to 15,000. So that's one thing I say is that there's a reasonable price range 
for everyone. And two, if you're using the cargo bike as a car replacement, then the metric really is how much does it cost to operate a car versus a cargo bike. And for us, the answer is it's about $500 for a cargo bike maintenance and about 12,000 for a car. Wow. So it's a big, big jump. And you know, even with a car, you have the same kind of expensive upfront costs, except for the, the cost to, con to continually upkeep that car is very expensive. Here's a definite make it moment for Maddie and Jeff's bike life. It's a little piece of the city that brings them so much joy. We are on what was formerly, you know, Central Park uh, Drive, not drive, but like this was all cars. And a few years ago, or a number of years ago, they made it car free. And so now it's only for pedestrians and cyclists and cargo bikers. A lot of bike life, of course, is about commuting and efficiency. But having a place that you can just go and enjoy and have fun and bike to a different playground or bike for a picnic, I think is equally as important. And it's nice to have, you know, the hustle and bustle of New York City and then have, you know, the beauty and the silence of Central Park. In a crowded city like New York, people can give up on the idea of cycling before they even start because they worry they won't have a place to store their bike. Definitely a potential break it moment, but yep, Maddie has solved this one too. So Maddie, you made a stop here. I made a stop here. Why? Because the number one question I get about getting a cargo bike, a big cargo bike in New York City is where you store it. And so we have been storing our three cargo bikes on the street and this is why. So behind me, you'll see this, this is not one of my bikes, but it could be one of my bikes, yes. but people store mopeds, motorcycles, other wheeled equipment all the time on the streets of New York City. And so I thought that if I had bikes, I would just sort of hide it in plain sight like the rest of the people do. And you're not that worried, you're not worried about theft? I'm not worried secure? about theft. I feel pretty safe. The bikes are air tagged, they're well locked, they're well covered. And in five, six years that I've had a bike, I have had only one instance where someone pilfered my bike and took a kid's helmet. Right. So, so bike, I feel like not the, the, bike. not the bike. No one has touched my bikes. Right. And yeah, so, I were in Harlem. Yeah, so it's, and it's interesting. Uh, you're right because you see these, and you don't even think about. You don't like even think about part it. of the street furniture. Yeah, they're just they're just they melts into the backdrop. And right. so I think if you don't call it call attention to the bike, then people are less likely to be interested in what it is. Very few people are going to go and like lift up all the covers to try and find something. New York is a winter city, so when the snow falls, that's clearly a break it moment for cycling, right? Also, it's January. It's January. Maybe coming off the coldest weekend of the year, yet you're still riding. Does winter not deter you? It does not deter me. I think we have this misconception that you only want to bike in the summer months or when it's you know, the climate is appropriate, but actually biking year round is really wonderful. It's really liberating. And I love winter biking. I like being out with the right gear. Again, it's all about the right gear, but why not be out here where the air is fresh and clean and crisp and getting, you know, vitamin D even in the, even in the winter. So I really enjoy, I enjoy winter biking with the right gear. Well, Thanks, Maddie, for the tour. It's my pleasure. Thank you for visiting me here in New York City. So it sounds like you've got a pretty good setup in New York to live car free. Yes, we definitely do with our different cargo bikes. It's, you know, really made it easy to have no reliance on cars and we'll go months, months and months and months without being inside of a car. What would, uh, if you had to change one thing to make your life easier and to get more people on bikes like you, what would it be? If we could have more um, car-free days, like when we have um, open streets in the summer, where people, it just fills Madison Avenue and all of these areas of New York City. If we could have more of those, then I think people would be more inclined to try biking and overcome that fear. They just need a taste of it. They just need a taste of it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I had a story where I lent one of my cargo bikes to a local friend for a week and they just, they loved it so much they went out and bought a cargo bike. Right. You know, and it really is an eye-opening, game-changing way of life when you have these bikes. And so, you know, I think if we could get more um, safe ways in which we can open up those streets and get people on bikes, then we might have more bikers. Yeah. Yeah. Words to live by. That's right. <laughs> All right. On that note. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks again. <laughs> okay. So a big thanks to Maddie and Jeff for taking some time out of their busy day to show me around a little bit. Just one final thing I wanted to share that I picked up on this day. So the reason you saw Jeff only at the beginning of this video is because halfway through the day he had to run off and pick up one of their 
children and run them to an appointment and then he reconnected with us later and I heard them discussing what was going on this evening for them and any parent will relate to this. They have three young kids. They were running all over the place. One kid had to go here, another had to be dropped there. Something else had to be picked up. You know the logistics of parents. It was crazy. I just slowly said thank you and backed away and carried on with my time in New York. <laughs> but the thing with Maddie and Jeff is that they're doing it all by cargo bike. And if you ask them why they choose a bike, the answer they give you is not some idealistic thing. I mean, they are advocates and they've grown to love their cargo bikes, bikes and promote them all of the time because they see the benefits. But the reason they started in the first place was practicality. They just found cargo bikes the best way of doing these things in their lives. They don't have to pay the huge expense of a car that only gets stuck in traffic here in New York anyway. They don't have to wait for the subways. They can do it on their own schedule, on a predictable way because bikes are always more predictable than cars in getting around a city. It just makes a lot of sense. So I'm sure there's people out there thinking that there's no way you can fit a bike into your life like this. But what I took from Maddie and Jeff is maybe that it's the other way around. Maybe it's your life that fits into the bike. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.